Hey, so I mentioned in my February wrap up, I think, I, I think it was my February wrap up that I mentioned it. I went to Berlin. I went to Germany for the first time with my uni group because we were going to the Berlin Film Festival and there I watched three films and I thought it would be fun to review them for you because that's cool. The first film I saw at the festival was a film called Weirdos, which is set in Canada in the 70s and is about this couple who is kind of going on a road trip to find the boy's mum and then on the road trip uh, he kind of has a question of his sexuality and his place in life and all of that jazz. And the film is in black and white and at the Q&A someone asked why and the director was just like, oh, we want to distinguish the fact that it's an art house film which is not a good enough reason. If it doesn't, if it has no bearing on the story, why is your film in black and white? It makes no sense. Uh, so there was that. Um, also the kind of main actor in it wasn't very engaging, I don't think. And it was kind of the coming of age film, or it was trying to be a coming of age film, but it didn't really say anything new to me, really. I thought it was kind of eh. Also I did fall asleep in the middle, so there's that. <laughs> it's not a good film if you fall asleep, so. I think I rated it two stars maybe on Letterbox. follow me on Letterbox. Um, but yeah, it was kind of, it was fine. I mean, it had some funny moments. I mean, there's um, a bit where kind of the boy's consciousness, I guess, his conscious appears as Andy Warhol and kind of gives him advice about life and that was funny. But um, I thought there wasn't really much else to distinguish it from the kind of rest of the teenage films you're used to. So I wasn't kind of enthralled with that film really. The next film we watched was a documentary called Almost Heaven, which was super strange but also really good, I think. Um, it was about, it's a documentary following uh, this girl who's 17 in China and it's about kind of how it's really hard to get a job in China, so she works as a mortician, so prepping dead bodies for their funerals and I think in China they have a different uh, way of doing it, so when they're prepping the body they kind of you know, it's like a spa almost, they give them like manicures and massages and the family watch this happening as like a way of saying goodbye and um, kind of a catharsis to the event I guess, which was really a foreign idea to me, I thought that was really strange and also having never seen a dead body it was very weird to kind of watch one in a spa setting. Um, but it was a really interesting documentary because it's obviously a side of life that I've never seen before and something that I've never wanted to see or expected to see but it was there in front of me and it was kind of hard to process that but it was it was really it was really interesting and the main girl in it she has you know a bubbly personality and you grow to like her and you kind of root for her to get out of the job really because she's not happy and uh you know it's obviously quite a hard job to do but it was a really interesting documentary I'm really glad that I saw it even though I wouldn't say I enjoyed it it was definitely something that was unique and something that I don't regret watching. And lastly, I'm leaving the best to last, was a film called Casting Jean Benet. And this is one that I booked to see myself, so it wasn't with my uni group, I just booked to see it because I thought it sounded incredible. And it was, so I know my tastes, clearly. Um, it's so, so good. Um, and it's about the Jean Benet Ramsey case, which I already knew a lot about because I read it when I was researching for my EPQ um, in year 12. Um, but basically the Jean Benet Ramsey case is the case of Jean Benet Ramsey, who is a six-year-old beauty pageant queen who got murdered in America in 1996. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's a heartbreaking case, but there was lots of speculation about who did it, they haven't uh, convicted anyone, there wasn't enough evidence, the uh, investigation was conducted completely wrong, a really shoddy way, but there was lots of blame and doubt around the parents and her brother and it's very very shady when you start reading into the details of the case. But what I loved about this documentary, it was in a format completely unknown to me like I had no idea what was what was going on but it was incredible and it's a really original way of doing it it was as if they were casting a feature film of what had happened so they had actors come in um, and so this on the screen just like an actor came in they sat down and said my name is bloody blah, blah I'm reading for the part of Jean Benet Ramsey um, and then they would start acting these lines and start becoming the characters and then in between kind of the reading the lines they would say oh this is what I think happened or this is this weird detail did you hear about this and 
it was really, some parts were really funny, which felt really strange to be laughing at a documentary about a murdered six-year-old girl. But what you're laughing at is the speculation, in a way, because I also find this really true that the trial by media and the way that media portrays the event, people just form their own opinions, like completely stupid opinions that are based on nothing, literally they're based on twisted facts or things that are completely inconsequential but they think that they know the ins and outs of the case and this is what was apparent in the documentary all these actors saying oh I don't think she did it or you know because it was she was six years old in 1996 and died on the 26th it means something and you're like that's ridiculous but that's what it was about and it was really really interesting and also as the actors keep talking throughout the documentary you learn more about the facts of the case and also you get introduced gradually to more and more of the characters um characters and it was so fascinating and it was completely um, absorbing as a documentary. You're completely hooked from beginning to end. The cinematography was beautiful, the way it was shot was really incredible. And I think it's a Netflix thing, so watch out for that on Netflix because, oh my god, it was so good. Because um, at the beginning of the film they had the big Netflix logo, but everything that they show at the Berlin Film Festival is a premiere, so it won't be on Netflix at the moment, I don't think, but please look out for it because it was incredible and I can't wait to watch it again when it comes on Netflix. Hopefully it comes on Netflix soon, but it was so, so good. So those are the films I watched at the Berlin Film Festival. If you've seen any of them, um, if you were in Berlin, please let me know. Um, but if you want to see any of them, also let me know. And yeah, just chat to me about films, that's always cool. Um, and um, I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!